Welcome, in this video we are cracking passwords with John the Ripper. So the assumptions are we have our lab files coming from GitHub. They are going to be some PowerShell scripts and some word lists that we're going to be using. The PowerShell scripts are to add users to our victim, but that means that we have to allow PowerShell to be ran on our victim. So that means we need to set up our victim to allow PowerShell to run, run the scripts, obtain our hashes, and then we have some cleanup to do as well. The assumption is you already have a meterpreter shell. So I'm going to do my Kali portion, assuming you already have a meterpreter shell session created. We will perform a hash dump and be saving the hash values in a text document. We're going to be using John the Ripper and associated word list to break our passwords. First things first, in our Windows 10 victim. We need to set our uh, execution policy so that we can run PowerShell scripts. So we do that by going to administrative PowerShell by running set execution policy either remote signed or unrestricted. Oftentimes PowerShell scripts are signed digitally so you, they need to be signed for you to, in order for you to run them by default they are set to restricted so only PowerShell uh, shells that are created on your local machine can run or we can set ones that are signed by a trusted source so for what we're going to be doing we're going to be setting it to either remote signed or unrestricted depending on which one works and then we're going to be running them again it is important to understand that after we've captured our hashes when we are done with this lab, run the remove script and run the set execution policy, setting it back to restricted. So let's go ahead and let's jump in and get started. All right, so I'm on my Windows 10 victim. I'm gonna open up a web browser. Edge is the only thing installed, so that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna go to Google. I'm gonna go to GitHub, type in my name. All right, so we are doing this course. We want to download this guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the URL so that I can see my tree, I can see my main, and I can see my subdirectory. GitHub's a little weird. Uh, I don't want it to download all of the top level content because I'm gonna be adding more content as we go. So I'm gonna use what's called down git. GitHub. And the nice thing here is it's going to be this down git GitHub page. And I'm going to go ahead and download the directory. It's going to download all the files that I need. And it's only going to download the path that I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all that content to my desktop. Close all of the windows go ahead and open this guy so first of all you're going to notice there are some add there's some remove and there's some word lists so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead i'm going to uh, add our intro but again because this is windows 10 default security it will not let me just execute these in a PowerShell. I have to be able to set them so that I should get a, a denied because these were created off a different machine and that's what the red was, was a deny. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to my PowerShell. I wanna run it as an admin. And again, the only reason I am doing this is so that, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do CD, C colon. Users, student, desktop, 
crack. So I'm going to go ahead and add the add user intro. Intro PS. And again, that's the red that it's not loading. Again, it's because we're not authorized. That is where the set execution policy comes into play. We need to set it so we can do remotely signed and go ahead and do yes to all. And that means we can actually run our intro uh, power, uh, PowerShell. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you what it's doing. So right now, those are my users. I'm gonna be adding in five users. And that's actually one of the things that I said at the very beginning. You may have to do this as, instead of remotely sign, unrestricted and yes to all and run the power add user intro ps1 again so only run if you trust it so we want to go ahead and run it yes and it created five users if you refresh the computer management, we can now see the users populate and all of these have passwords. So instead of you having to randomly create these, I did it for you. When we are done, we'll be running the remove intro and we'll also be setting this back to restricted. That way we can leave the machine kind of how we found it. All right, so that took care of the lab files and allowing our victim to run PowerShell scripts. So again, the assumption is you already have a interpreter shell to our victim. If you don't, pause the video, get it set up. We've done that in previous videos, so you, you should know how to do it. All right, so I am in my Kali machine. I have the interpreter session open, and my question mark. What I'm looking for is the ability to dump the password hashes from my victim. Happens to be that hash dump is already uh, towards the bottom, so hash dump. So interesting, this is actually a very common issue. So we're gonna work through the uh, problem. We're gonna see what we can do to correct this. All right, so what I want to do is I want to see exactly why it's doing this. So I want to go ahead and do a system info. It's our victim. It's a 64-bit machine. It is using Windows 10. So it shows two users logged in. I want to see what services are running and who's running them. So this actually is going to be important coming up because one of the issues when we're trying to attach one of the system services like the SAM database is the user we're running it as makes it a little bit more difficult. So to verify, what we're going to do is we're going to do a get PID. So our current PID is 6352. We're running it as the user. The user is an admin, but you know what? Let's just double check. Get priv. So so we have the appropriate permissions, but if we do our hash dump again, it's going to fail. So one of the things we can do is maybe let's try to get our system's permission. So,
our new permissions. So we should be able to run this, but again, it's going to fail. So let's try, instead of uh, manipulating our users, let's go ahead and let's do a PS. Let's try to migrate to different uh, PID. So what we can do is we can do migrate and we can do let's do 6836 so we can now see that our PID is Sixty-eight thirty-six. So now let's try our hash dump again. And it actually does work. So whatever reason, it's a little weird, but for whatever reason, we have to be a, a using a system process and we're gonna be stealing the primary token, the token that was started as a system since the uh, system as you get system uh, function wasn't really working. So here are our hashes. Let's go ahead and copy them. And we will go ahead, new document, empty file. Pass, uh, password, hashes. and paste it and save it. Minimize our interpreter shell and now we can start doing our pass. All right, so now that we have our hashes, what, are, what exactly is this hash? So I'm gonna take Bill Collins and I wanna break down this hash so I understand what it means first. So here I have the Bill Collins hash. Bill Collins colon 1002 colon hexadecimal number colon another large number. So in reality, I've already broken it down. Bill Collins, the first group is the username. The second, the 1002 is the relative ID. Basically, this is the last four of the SID of the user. The next column, the next step separated by the colons, is the LM hash, and then the last uh, column separated again by the colon is the uh, NTLM hash. That way we can now look at any of our hash dumps and we can understand a little bit better of that structure. And one of them is it doesn't like the way that we do our dumps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I want to remove all of the additional content that we're not going to be using. So I want to get rid of the LM hash, the uh, red, and the name. I want just our int, uh, NTLM hash. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this. And again, nope. Get rid of the username and go ahead and clean that up. All right, so here we have just our NTLM hashes. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. All right, so now that we have our hashes, first thing I wanna do is I wanna go to Firefox. We did this on our Windows 10 machine. But one thing we did not do was we didn't get the word lists on our attacker. So I'm going to do get tab. I want to go ahead and download my files. I want to save them. And I want to open it. 
close out of Firefox. So right now we are doing our word list. We're doing our intro, which is perfectly fine. Other labs, we may use the other word lists, but for now, that's the one that we need. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to our password cracking attacks. We're going to be opening up John the Ripper. John the Ripper does require us to put in our username or, or our password for our user. What is interesting is John is actually a command line tool. I'm going to do a control shift T, get a new tab going. We can also install Johnny, J O H N N Y. I want to install it, yes. Give it a minute to download, and then I'm going to go ahead and launch it. Johnny is a GUI graphical uh, version of John the Ripper. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. But one thing with our graphical user interface, sometimes it doesn't work very well. For example, we have password hashes in a text document. It actually did load. So sometimes it will not load because they're only looking for specific files. First thing we're going to notice is the hashes. It actually does populate. All right, so once we have it open, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and let's go to our options. So it should be our default options by default, clearly. We need to go ahead and set a word list. Word list. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And it should be as simple as start new attack. And one thing I do want to point out when you set the word list, current hash format. If we know the hash type, we need to modify this. And we already know it's an NT hash format. Start the attack. And we can see our five passwords you will see that there are four null passwords, and there's one that just can't be guessed. This can at least now be taken back to our word list, and we can actually see which one it is. Again, navigate back to your Windows machine and get that uh, policy uh, set back. Let's clean up our lab, and if there's any questions, please reach out. Thank you. So, remove intro. Run once. Yes. That deleted all of my users. And next, set... Set execution policy to restricted to all. All right, this is how to do basic cracking with Hashcat. If you have any questions, please reach out.